if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, I'm going to be covering uh, a, a large section of scripture today, verses 9 through 20, through the end of the chapter. And so buckle up, hold on tight, because uh, we're going to be moving and grooving for this. So it's good to study the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is revelation, singular, not revelations, plural. Uh, the Hollywood always gets it wrong. Every movie I think I've ever seen, they always say, well, the book of Revelations plural and then they quote the verse or whatever and usually it's a misquote anyway but it's all right hollywood doesn't have to get that right we can get it right here today revelation of jesus christ today's message is the majesty of jesus and the church as a light and so we're going to see that uh, in the passage today so if you have your bibles and are there at revelation chapter 1 uh, verse 9 we'll begin today i john your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet saying, write in a book, it really should be a scroll. They didn't have books back then, they had scrolls. Write in a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the middle of the lampstands, I saw one like a or like the Son of Man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were like, like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, when it had, has been made to glow in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like a sun shining in its strength. When I, say him, when I saw him, uh, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and, I, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first. And the last, I am the living one. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Therefore, write, these, write the things which you have seen, and the things that are, and the things which will take place after these things. As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, and the seven stars, or the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches, the majesty of Jesus and the church as a light. That's what we're going to discuss today. So we're going to jump right in back at verse nine. I, John, right? John identifies himself. He's already said that he is the bond servant. He's already identified himself as John uh, to the seven churches, though we didn't get the actual churches that were going to be referenced. Uh, and we do get that in this passage today. But he says, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation. A lot of times the uh, events of Revelation are referred to as the great tribulation or the tribulation. Uh, and most of this is uh, comes from what Jesus said in Matthew 24, uh, verses 21 and 22. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. That is the great tribulation that is talked about. The only problem is that is not what John is referring to when he makes this statement that I, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation. You see, we're not talking about that great tribulation because John did not experience that great tribulation because there are still human beings here today. And it makes very clear that had the days not be cut short, that that tribulation would have wiped out the entire planet. And so that's not what's being referred to. What tribulation then is being referred to here by John? See, he's not referencing the tribulations that will be described in his prophetic vision, those that are going to take place after chapter 3. 
but he is um, uh, recognizing that as Christians, we experience tribulation right here, right now, every day, all throughout Christian history. We have experienced, maybe personally, maybe just by the knowledge of those who have gone before us or those who uh, we know who have experienced tribulation, but we as Christians today experience tribulation. Of course, in John's day, it was much worse. See, the Christianity in the early church, when the disciples had begun to start planting churches and began the apostolic movement and the church began to rise up and Christianity uh, began to become prominent, Rome was the governmental power and there was an emperor of Rome that said, kill all the Christians. Martyred, they were thrown into uh, prison, they were crucified like Christ, they were uh, made an example of, they were put in the Colosseum to be slaughtered and ripped apart by animals. Uh, there was a lot of horrific things that took place. That is some tribulation. <laughs> and John says, hey, I, your fellow partaker in tribulation, and he is writing from this island called Patmos. Well, Patmos was a slave island, was a prison camp. Think of Alcatraz. <laughs> You know, that's essentially what it was, except there was mining operations. And of course, John was sent to the island of Patmos by the Roman government because he was a Christian, because he was preaching and teaching and planting churches. So he firsthand has experienced the tribulation and he, and he writes to these churches. He writes to Christians and he says, I, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and the kingdom and perseverance, which are in Jesus. You see, it's not just tribulation. That happens when you become a Christian. You also become part of God's kingdom, right? And so John says, I'm a fellow partaker in tribulation. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I've experienced being persecuted uh, because of my beliefs. And he says also, I am part of God's kingdom. In fact, uh, we've looked at last week how uh, we are priests. We are a kingdom of priests. If you look at verse 6, that's what John says. He has made us to be a kingdom priests to his God and Father. And so we are this royal priesthood. We are part of this kingdom of God. And you and I as Christians uh, get to have our Lord as our king. And so there are good things when you become a Christian, and there are some difficult things when you become a Christian. There are tribulation, and then there's the benefits of being part of God's kingdom. But then there is also this last word, perseverance. Perseverance. I, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and the kingdom and perseverance, which are in Jesus. I'm so grateful for that last word, perseverance. You guys know what perseverance means. It means to, to keep going when things look bleak. <laughs> when you're ready to give up, you keep moving forward. You keep trying. You keep making an effort. You don't give up. Right? Never give up, never surrender. That's the idea here, perseverance. And that perseverance is innate within Christians. You as a Christian have perseverance within you. It's one of the things that the Holy Spirit provides to us as Christians to be able to make it through the difficulties, the situations, the struggles that we face, the tribulation that's going on. John says, I'm, I'm, I'm a fellow partaker of tribulation. I'm a fellow partaker in God's kingdom. And I'm a fellow partaker in perseverance, which are all in Jesus. Which is interesting, obviously. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. <laughs> right? Because in Christ, we will experience tribulation. We will experience the benefits of being part of his kingdom. We will experience and have a desire and a need for perseverance. John says, it writes these things so that he can empathize, so that he can sympathize with the other Christians that are experiencing suffering uh, in his day. And obviously it's applicable for us as well because Christians still are persecuted around the world. We still go through tribulation. We still are part of God's wonderful heavenly kingdom and we still receive uh, the power of perseverance through the Holy Spirit. 